this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Um, this plant won't grow. Reasons unknown, and boy have I tried to find out why. Um, in the finding out why process, I've just used a site, um, website recommended to me by um, one of my viewers, which is orchidea.ca, which is the word orchid, and then eya.ca on the end. And it's, um, it's like a register of hybrids. Um, they're not all in there, but most of them are. And I was surprised to find this, so, and also pleased. Um, this is a dendrobium. <laughs> Actually, let me put it better. It's a dying dendrobium. And as I said, for reasons unknown at the moment. And it's dendrobium, lovely virgin, and the variety angel. Now that um, website has given up a few secrets, not an explanation, but a few secrets. This has got nearly 50% of nobly in it, and it's got nearly 20% of Findlayanum in it. Um, combination of those two don't seem that compatible to me, but this goes back to a Yamamoto nobly hybrid, and. Um, <clears throat> out of that school of hybrids have come some of the best nobly hybrids that there are available to us on the market. Many mass-produced ones, good enough to be mass-produced and get to blooming size quick enough to make a profit on them. So, very good school of thought for nobly hybrids. But this plant, it wasn't that good when I got it, but at least it was growing. And the older part of the plant is basically desiccated canes. These are not happy canes, they're not growing. It just refuses to push out roots or new growths from the base and as a consequence it's dying. And I've, I've given it every chance I can but what it does do is produce really good kikis and that's all it will do. Um, yeah so I mean that's the plant. I mean you can see here where I took a kiki off and um, there's another one here that I took off. See, now I cut that kiki off and it promptly grew another kiki out of the stump of the kiki. Now, I've never seen anything like that before. Uh, where, where's the flipping camera? It's all right. It's early in the day. So you can see a cane here produced a kiki, which was cut off and promptly produced another kiki. But the new kiki has got no roots. This is a kiki here. It's, it's got no roots. Now this one, down here, <laughs> has produced root, singular. But in no shape or form can that kiki really survive if I take it off now. I don't know what nutrients it's getting out of the old cane. Hardly any, I suspect. So it may be just surviving on what it can get from photosynthesis, because it has got a good set of leaves. Yeah, nice healthy looking kiki. But, I can't take it off until it needs more roots. But back to the subject, the two kikis I did take off are here. And these are the later stages of my attempts to get this flipping thing to grow. Because when I took the kikis off, they had no roots. So I tried standing them in water for a while. Nothing. I tried putting them in moist sphagnum moss. Nothing. I tried leaving them dry on the bench for quite a long time, on their side, to see if that would induce roots. Nothing. <laughs> and then eventually, <coughs> which seems to be a trait with this thing, the two kikis that I cut off produced their own kikis. And lo and behold, those kikis have got good roots. So that's what I'm dealing with today. I've got two kikis. Now these, these kikis were longer than this. I cut them at this point to be able to stand them in that glass of water and acclimatise some of the roots to being moist, which they have done quite happily. And since I did that, they've opened their leaves. So I've now got viable kikis, nice little root systems at <clears throat> and open leaves to be able to photosynthesize, I can now pot these. Now I'm not going to pot them with their parent cane, simply because I don't suspect that parent cane's going to live. It's just going to 
fail. Now these kikis really embed themselves. Most kikis just twist off. Now whether these are going to do it, I don't know. Well that one will. I think. So I'm trying desperately not to damage any of the roots as I twist. They're very easily knocked. Okay, that hasn't come off clean. But it's clean enough and it will get a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, let's see if this one will twist off. This one's got a slightly better root system. Yep, that one's come off clean. Now, I'm going to leave those two in a lot less water than that. Actually, I need to put some fresh water in there. But I'm going to carry on standing those in a tiny amount of water and see if they'll root. I don't think they will. That's one of my best glasses, that is. Never mind. So the idea with this is to just pot up these two kikis. Um, I listened to a video, which I mentioned in a previous video, about um, potting dendrobiums in the smallest pot you can get away with. Hang on, let me just get me cinnamon before I forget. I don't want this video dragging on. It's only a quick pot up the kikis video. But we will put a spot of cinnamon on that damaged area. Trying not to get it on the roots, of course, because it will desiccate the roots. It's got an incredible drying effect, cinnamon. So that'll do. It just dries it off fast and helps stop any infections, and it's not absolutely essential. You don't all have to rush out and deplete the supermarket stocks of cinnamon. <sighs> right. So I don't know whether these two will stay supported um, in this little pot with those roots, but they're going to get given the chance to be self-supporting. I still have this theory that if, if, a, if a plant isn't firm in its media, its roots will desperately try and make it firm. But if it really wobbles around, you can actually lose some roots. Every time you pick the pot up, you move it, you know, things like that. Now I'm using small bark on its own. Um, even if I had some moss, which I haven't, <laughs> I still wouldn't use it. Um, I want these little roots to dry out totally in between watering at this stage of their life. I don't want them staying wet. The idea of putting a few tips in water was to make sure that at least some of the roots had seen water and acclimatised to being wet some of the time at least. And then um, <coughs> as the other roots become acclimatised to being in media, they too will accept the fact that every now and again they get a good soaking and then dry out again. Now it's a little deeper than I would normally pot a plant but I want all of the roots in the media and the fact that it's bark, I'm just teasing away the bark from the very base of the plant which I don't want to get wet. So now all the roots are in the media just a gentle tap to settle it, although quite honestly with the small orchiata bark the watering settles it. it. It just forces all the little bits into the little gaps and it settles down nicely. Now the one thing I must do is put a label in that. I'm getting quite a few kikis around the grow room and quite honestly if I got all the pots out and lined them up next to each other they all look the flipping same. <laughs> so I'm going to have to start writing labels. I've got really labelled uh, lazy with labels lately. So that's it. Now hopefully these two will grow on. Um, now what they're going to do, I don't know, but at least they're starting with a root system which the mother plant hasn't got. It has really no viable roots in that pot. It's got a huge rock in there to stabilise it. Um, but it won't grow roots and it won't grow basal shoots. So Apart from the kikis, it's probably doomed. Um, now at the moment, as I've said, 
these two key keys I'm going to leave on and this one because even though it's dangling down if it does bloom they're going to be they'll be all wrong basically but um, these two key keys may grow on and bloom I don't know one of them's got a root and uh, that will be its downfall as far as staying with the mother plant because if it can produce a reasonable root system it's, it'll come off um, and that gives me yet another chance to keep this particular variety in my collection. But I think keeping it in my collection, you know, this little pot full of kikis is the future. Now I wouldn't do this for a nobly hybrid unless it was just a little bit different perhaps. And when I first got this plant it was in bloom and out of the nobly hybrids that I've got around um, quite honestly it didn't look like a nobly hybrid it looked like a phalaenopsis and quite honestly from memory those blooms came out the top of the canes not from the nodes down the cane so somewhere in the production of this particular hybrid I believe something might have gone a bit wrong um, but we shall see. All I can do is grow these on to the point at which they're strong enough and healthy enough to actually bloom and then we can see where the blooms come out and get perhaps a better picture. <clears throat> as far as these canes are, con uh, are concerned they have sections down their cane. Well that says nobly to me um, and as I said, the parentage says there's almost 50% nobly in the, in the makeup of um, this particular hybrid. This hybrid took a long time produce, to produce. It's got four or five generations of crosses underneath it. Yeah? So you're starting off with, like, you know, some hybrids that you then, say, take these two, you hybrid upwards and get one. Then you take these two and go up and get one. You take these two and you go up and get one. You take these two and go up and get one. So where there was eight, you've now got four. And then you take two of those four and go up one. And another two of those four and go up one. That gives you two. And then the final cross is those two, like third or fourth generation hybrids, go up to the final cross, which is what this is. So there's a lot of work went into getting this. <laughs> and somewhere down the line there's something in it that I believe is not necessarily as compatible as perhaps it was first thought and so it's messing up its growth genes and it doesn't quite know what to do so if in doubt most dendrobiums will chuck out kikis you never know <clears throat> down in amongst there there could, could be a couple of cold growers you know from right up in the mountains and so I'm keeping it too warm which is one reason why you get kikis on dendrobiums. You're just keeping it too warm. Um, there are other reasons. <laughs> um, but the fact that it's got a fair percentage of nobly in it, um, you know, it would need to be drier and cooler and a bit brighter in the winter. Not quite so important for the hybrids, but um, nonetheless, it's a trait. So... Uh, Anyway, we'll see what we can do. That's all I'm doing with it for now, apart from going and getting a tag now, before I forget, and finishing me coffee. Okay, thanks for dropping by. See you next time.